Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast and getting into our last segment around the quarterback situation between the Steelers and the Browns. Who has a better quarterback situation at this point in the you know development, in the path that each of these teams has been going through? Um, through so far, through three years, Deshaun Watson will be entering now his third season as the uh, Browns quarterback and the stats to sort of back up and validate him haven't been too flattering to say the least and um it just has raised questions as to you know was that five-year 230 million dollar deal worth it fully guaranteed i might add was that worth it for a guy again that hasn't shown his best stuff as of yet um through 12 starts with the cleveland browns there isn't too much positive to take away from it and it has raised some questions among some analysts around the nfl like phil sims he was part of a show that he does on a network and he was sort of ranking the quarterback situations um in the afc north and obviously he had the ravens and the Bengals up there as the two best but then you get into the browns and steelers and where most people would probably have the browns as the third best situation phil sims was actually on the other side of it and um he was a former quarterback uh for the new york giants and current analyst uh for the NFL as well, in case you guys didn't know too much about Phil Sims, but he sort of gave his thoughts about it and why he actually has the Pittsburgh Steelers as a better quarterback situation than the Cleveland Browns at the current moment. Basically, um, in his statement as to why that is, as you can see on your screen, he said, what was he doing when he was healthy? He was playing out of control, referencing Deshaun Watson, obviously. Um, we talked about it. It was really unbelievable. It was like he was out there mad at the world and was going to try and beat everyone up on the defensive side of the ball, which when you try to do as a quarterback, you lose. Pretty strong words from Phil Simms um, saying that he was out there looking like he was out of control, playing out of control, not really playing like Deshaun Watson and how you would expect him to play um, as a 28-year-old, 27-year-old quarterback now in Deshaun Watson has had pretty um, a good amount of experience already in the NFL. And you saw the potential there in Houston. So it is just puzzling to see why he has struggled to really get anything going so far in the in the Cleveland Browns situation as their starting quarterback. Again, injuries had to do a lot with that. But again, in this topic, in this discussion of where I fall now, Disclaimer, I am a Steelers fan, so all bias aside as much as I can, um, I, I can't help but agree with him or at least see his point as being pretty valid in this argument, in this discussion, um, however you want to phrase it. Um, this explanation for his rankings of the AFC North quarterbacks, Pittsburgh ahead of Cleveland, I don't think it's too too bad because also he sort of explained a little bit more as to why the Steelers are in a bit of a better situation than the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Phil Sims went on to say his reputation, Russell Wilson, and all that. Listen, it's a big motivation when they count you out. Oh, he doesn't know how to get along with people. He still has arm talent. He's good. He's got a good, strong arm, can throw it down the field. And also mention how Justin Fields, he um, analyzed how he just got better, uh, better and better as the year went along last season. So he is feeling a little bit more positive about those two guys there and also the Pittsburgh quarterbacks Justin Fields and Russell Wilson I think for me the biggest point in all of this in comparing both of them you know money talks money does carry a heavy weight so if you have one quarterback being um, paid 230 million dollars guaranteed and then essentially you have Justin Fields and Russell Wilson basically both playing on a one-year deal and costing the Steelers close to nothing um, in terms of contract and how they affect the salary cap, that would turn a lot of heads, honestly, if you're really having nothing to lose in these two quarterback options that you have in Justin Fields and Russell Wilson compared to a guy that you're already handicapped or handcuffed, I should say, um, more so for the next two years, three years, um, and $230 million is going out of your pocket to him. For him not to produce yet, you still have hope that he can do it. I'm still pretty hopeful that Deshaun Watson will show his true potential now in the third year for the Cleveland Browns. But so far, based on the results that you see, I think just based on that, you have to have to give the nod to the Steelers just based on that simple fact. And also, 
Um, based on what you're getting for the price there, like I mentioned, it's hard not to bet on the Steelers as a better situation. Also could say that now Justin Fields and Russell Wilson are arguably in a better team and better situation than they were last year where they might not have put up the most eye-popping numbers. But if you compare that to Deshaun Watson in terms of games played, the yards, the interceptions and touchdowns and completion percentage, all three of them are very similar in the two years that Deshaun Watson has played for the Cleveland Browns and just last season for Justin Fields and for Russell Wilson. In games played, Deshaun Watson in the last two years has played 12. Russell Wilson played 15 last year and Justin Fields played 13. So in one season, they've already played more than Deshaun Watson. Then in terms of yards, just passing yards for Justin Fields, he recorded over 2,500 Russell Wilson was over 3,000 passing yards last year, and Deshaun Watson in two years for the Cleveland Browns has had only 2,217 passing yards, again, less than Fields and Russell Wilson in just one year last year, and also Fields adds another dimension with his running ability, four rushing touchdowns and 657 yards to go along with the passing numbers, interceptions, Justin Fields in one year, nine interceptions, Russell Wilson, eight in one year last year, and Deshaun Watson, nine in two years. So that's a bit more flattering for Deshaun Watson. And then in touchdowns, 14 touchdowns for Deshaun Watson through two years for the Cleveland Browns, 26 last year for Russell Wilson, and 16 for Deshaun, uh, for uh, Justin Fields last year as well. Passing touchdowns, 20 total touchdowns if you include the rushing ones as well. And then the completion percentage, Russell Wilson takes that with 66%. Deshaun Watson in two years at 60% completion percentage and 61% completion percentage for Justin Fields. So the stats are virtually the same for all three of those guys, if not just a little bit better for Justin Fields and Russell Wilson in just one season last year compared to two for Deshaun Watson. And I, it might seem like it is pretty evident, like I'm trying to make it seem evident, but you know it's hard to go against those stats, and it is also hard to go against the fact that Deshaun Watson has a very talented team around him. He has all the tools there to still not completely lose hope in him, but again, if I was a fan of the Browns and he has hardly played and they're allocating so much money to him, I would be getting a little bit antsy now to finally see something out of Deshaun Watson because if you're just getting the same results and... Through two years, Deshaun Watson has yet to play a playoff game for the Cleveland Browns. That is something where it comes to a point now where uh, you start thinking, can we use this money for something else? You know, Can we use it for somebody else that can get us over the hump and can't get us further into the playoffs? Because this team is super talented, among one of the most talented teams in the entire AFC. So they have to get better production out of that quarterback position. And if they do that, they have a great chance to perform better late in the year into January, late December, and have more success that way because Cleveland is itching to have more playoff success. If they could do that and get more quarterback production from Deshaun Watson, hopefully in this year, you know, then it'll shut a lot of people up. It'll shut a lot of analysts up like Phil Simms um, if Deshaun Watson can go out there and prove it, but he has to be available. He has to be healthy, and if they can manage that, they can compete with anybody in the AFC North and really anybody in the AFC there, like I mentioned. But that's how Phil Simms feels about it. That's how I feel about it. But I am open to changing. I'm not locked in on my bias towards the Steelers. I could definitely be swayed. Um, but for right now, I won't be. And that's how I feel about it. So that'll do it for that topic. And that'll do it for the show. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode of the GSMC chip shot football podcast and also um thank you guys for tuning me tuning into this show if you want to see more of me and this show tune into the gsmc sports network channel and the gsmc podcast network channel on youtube for all the live shows are recorded and posted on there youtube shorts are also on there and available for you guys to tune into then you have individual segment videos if you don't want to watch a whole video or a whole live show don't have time to you can tune into a specific topic of that show and also please remember to like follow and subscribe to the gsmc chip shot football podcast as well as checking out the network on other social medias like facebook instagram twitter and tiktok for other 
topics on the network other than just sports as well. Thank you guys again for joining me on today's episode. And as a reminder, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more football discussions and NFL conversations with me, Manny Maradiegui, as your host, signing off for right now. And hopefully I see you guys back here again with me tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.